The year is 1901 in London, England. A 20-year-old Scottish man by the name of Alexander Fleming is working as a clerk for a shipping company, but is about to have his life altered in such a way that leads him on a path to becoming one of the most notable biologists of the entire century. From an early age, Fleming had shown potential through his academic abilities in school, and an increase in academic opportunity is the reason he moved from Scotland to London to live with his brother when he was 13. Unfortunately, economic hardship led to him leaving Regent Street Polytechnic, where he was studying at the time. While working as a clerk, though, Fleming received a healthy inheritance from his uncle, an inheritance he used to enter medical school at St. Mary's Hospital in London. In 1906, he graduated at the top of his class and began working as a research assistant under Almerth Wright, who was the head of the inoculation department at St. Mary's at the time. Under Wright, Fleming received his Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery degree. It was at this point in Fleming's life where he came to a crossroads, and he was unsure of the career path he wanted to take, debating between medical research and becoming a practicing surgeon. He did take and pass his surgeon's exam at St. Mary's and was accepted as a fellow in 1909, but as fate would have it, he decided against becoming a surgeon and remained with Wright in his laboratory to pursue medical research alongside his mentor. He would remain at St. Mary's for the entirety of his career. Fleming quickly built a reputation as quite an exceptional experimentalist dealing with the microscopic as he quickly made a series of discoveries on his own and also built upon and improved discoveries and inventions made by previous immunologists. The first of his accomplishments came when he improved the Wassermann test, which is a method of testing and treating syphilis. Fleming simplified this test so that blood samples could be collected by using a simple prick of the finger as opposed to extraction from a vein. His second achievement came during the First World War, when he and Wright both were moved to a makeshift army laboratory in Boulogne, France, to serve as captains in the Royal Army Medical Corps. While in France, he and Wright examined the antiseptics the surgeons in the field were using to treat infections, and found that they were doing more harm than good. Not only were they doing a not-so-great job at killing the harmful bacteria, but they were also doing a rather great job at killing white blood cells in the body. Upon coming across this discovery, Fleming went to the lab and used a culture made from his own nasal mucus, extracted from when he was suffering from the common cold a couple weeks earlier. What he found from this was that some bacterial colonies would form, but none would form in the mucus itself. This led to his eventual discovery and coining of the term lysozyme, an antimicrobial enzyme present in mucus, tears, and saliva. Although lysozymes turned out to be rather weak as a means of fighting bacterial infections, Fleming's discovery reopened a sense of hope in the quest to find non-toxic antiseptics and opened the door to his later research that would result in one of the most important discoveries in all of human history, penicillin. Fleming's discovery of penicillin came a decade after the First World War ended in 1928, when he was back at his lab at St. Mary's. Fleming, in fact, had just returned from a vacation and came back to a bacterial culture in his lab that he accidentally left out while he was gone. Prior to his vacation, Fleming was studying the bacteria Staphylococcus, the bacteria behind staph infections, and after returning, Fleming noticed it had been contaminated by a fungus. Upon observing the culture closely, he noticed that a ring had formed around the fungus and that no bacterial growth was present in this ring. This phenomenon sparked Fleming's interest and he then began growth of cultures of the fungus, which he later identified as Penicillium notatum. He extracted the substance that was produced by the fungus naming it penicillin, and began running tests with it as well. He found that it was extremely effective at stopping the growth of bacteria, even when diluted up to 800 times. Fleming reported these results in the British Journal of Experimental Pathology in 1929, 
but somehow the results went largely unnoticed for nearly a decade. If there was a potential reason for this, it was most likely due to the fact that Fleming never tested penicillin on animals or suggested its use as a potential therapeutic. Despite the apparent lack of interest in the substance, Fleming continued research on it, primarily using it as a means to separate penicillin-sensitive bacteria from penicillin-insensitive bacteria in bacterial mixtures. Penicillin would not find its way into medicine until nearly a decade later. In 1938, British biochemist Ernst Boris Chain stumbled across Fleming's paper while at the Department of Pathology at the University of Oxford. He and his colleague, Howard Walter Florey, were intrigued by the results and quickly began working with the penicillin sample they had obtained from another Oxford colleague, who had in turn been given the sample by Fleming himself nearly a decade earlier. The main problem Chain and Flory overcame regarding penicillin was how it was both extremely unstable and extremely difficult to purify. The team did find a way, however, through the use of a device that combined bedpans, milk churns, and baths. By 1940, they had successfully produced the first purified form of penicillin and began to test the substance on mice and later on human beings. By 1941, their tests had proven that penicillin was effective at preventing the spread of many forms of bacteria while also being non-toxic to humans and animals. The drug was quickly marketed in the United States and, by 1942, was being mass-produced by American pharmaceutical companies to treat wounded soldiers fighting in the Second World War. By the end of the war, the supply of penicillin was so large that it was able to be used on civilians as well, and the rest is history. Fleming, Chain, and Florey won the Nobel Prize in 1945 for the discovery of penicillin and its curative effect in various infectious diseases. Fleming had to wait nearly two decades to receive recognition for his discovery, but thanks to the implementations by Chain and Florey, the discovery is now considered to be one of the most important in medicinal history. It was also very coincidental that the discovery of the first antibiotic happened right at the same time as the largest military conflict in history, and its impact was immediately felt around the world, saving countless wounded soldiers and, in the years to come, countless civilian lives. Since its implementation as a drug, penicillin has saved an estimated between 200 million and 500 million lives. Thanks to an accidental discovery by a more than prepared microbiologist and the brilliant work of a team of a biochemist and pharmacologist, the world of medicine has been completely revolutionized and many diseases that would have otherwise been fatal have been treated. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.